God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's remain standing for a moment of silence for the ones who passed on 9-11 of 2001. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Alt? Here. Mr. Beistel? Here. Mr. Calero? Here. Mrs. Love? Here. Mr. Miller? Mr. Polakowski? Here. Mrs. Rhodes? Here. Mrs. Shipley? Here. Taylor Sipos? Here. Sage Gwynn? I'd like to formally introduce and welcome Taylor and Sage to our, our uh, forum here that meets a couple times a month. You folks are here once a month. And just tell us a little about yourselves and what got you here today, some, maybe some of your extracurriculars and what you're involved in at school. Taylor, I'll let you go first. I'm a senior at South Carolina, and I'm um, president of the National Honor Society. I'm involved in YEA, um, Spanish National Honor Society, Spanish Club. Um, I participate in tennis. tennis Thank you. Obviously some scholars and some leaders here, so welcome. Citizens' comments? And we have no comment cards this evening. Uh, minutes? It is recommended that the board approve the minutes of the August 7 and August 14, 2014 meetings. Motion? Make motion. Motion by Mr. Polakowski. Second? Second. Second by Mrs. Rhodes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 8-0 with one absent. Business and finance fund accounts. It's recommended that the board approve the August 2014 bills payable. We do not have a treasurer's report. Uh, the bank statement uh, was late in arriving due to the holiday. Need a motion? Motion by Mr. Beistel. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Polakowski. Questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Bentz? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one absent. Old business, exoneration of greater percentage of taxes for formal fraternal order of eagles. Yeah, Mr. Potonik has um, prepared a resolution. I don't intend to read the whole thing here, but I will uh, make sure that each of you has a copy. Um, and it's recommended that the board exonerate more than 35% of the taxes for the property owned by the former Fraternal Orders of Eagles, local area 1007, at the tax map number 30-02-02-0-329 and 30-02-02-0327. Need a motion? Motion by Mrs. Shipley, second. Second by Mrs. Rhodes. Questions? Comments? Do we have a percentage that we're looking at? Uh, we need to uh, break this up or uh, down first before we change the percentage. Because this says. No, I'm just saying that, but. Uh, yeah, I gave. It says more than. So right. I, I gave you information last week as to what, you know, the. <coughs> excuse me, the buyer's looking for. Um, you know, in terms of, from my position, I don't have a recommendation that that's a board decision. So we should probably vote to decide if we want to go over 35, and then if oh, that passes, yeah, then we can okay, pick yes. a percentage. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, if Mrs. Shipley made the motion, if you want to, can we insert? A percentage in there, or just go with voting over 35%? Well, I mean, 
the, the actual motion on the agenda is to first see if there's support for something greater than 35%. Okay. So, yes. no, so we'll have discussion on that. Yeah. So for discussion, otherwise we'll vote to go over 35 or keep it at 35. Seeing no discussion, roll call. Mr. Baistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? No. Mrs. Love? No. Mr. Polakowski? No. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? No. Mr. Benz? Yes. Motion fails. Four for one absent. New business, St. Vincent Prevention Project. It is recommended that the board approve the 2014-15 service delivery agreement with St. Vincent College at a cost of $26,425. Motion. Motion by Mr. Polakowski. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Calero. Questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Calero. Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? No. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes. Motion passes 7 1 with 1 absent. Garfield Avenue. It's recommended that the board approve the sale of a property located at 612 Garfield Avenue, Scottdale, PA, tax map 30-02-060-325 for $600. Need a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Polakowski. Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Shipley. Questions? Roll call, please. Mrs. Love? <clears throat> Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes. Motion passes eight with one absent. Um, TSBA officer elections, before um, we get into this, um, we're going to have a discussion and um, I'll have the superintendent read for the president, the two names. Um, since there's just the one contest, just to speed things up, we're going to, uh, I'll have to ask the secretary to do a roll call vote, just like we do in December when we have our old local elections. And you can give the name of Kathy Swope or Charles Ballard, or if you don't care either way or haven't researched it, you can just abstain or pass or whatever, just to keep things moving, but we will have discussion. So does anyone have anything that they read or saw or noticed this week? Seeing nothing. You just want to read the two names and then we can have a roll call. We have Kathy Swope and Charles Ballard. Madam Secretary, would you call the roll? Mr. Alt votes for? Oh, Mr. Bystel votes for? Mr. Calero votes for? Mr. Ballard. Mrs. Love votes for? Mr. Ballard. Mr. Polakowski votes for? Mr. Ballard. Mrs. Rhodes votes for? Mrs. Swope. Mrs. Shipley votes for? Mr. Ballard. Mr. Bance votes for? Mrs. Swope. So that's that four four. Uh, Ballard. So Mr. That's Ballard will receive the vote from our district, and all the rest of them are unopposed. So you should ask the secretary to cast the unanimous ballot and get her authorization to do that. <clears throat> Mrs. Secretary, will you cast the unanimous ballot for Mr. Ballard? We can just do a uh, for it, voice vote, right? Oh, okay. For everybody. Okay. Yeah. We can do a voice vote. Yes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. So we'll go with Mr. Ballard and all the unopposed names, and we'll take care of getting that into PSBA. We need the executive session for personnel. Please. Executive session for personnel. Um, I will have a report for you. 
about a tax appeal for um, Scottsdale Housing LP, which would be more commonly known as the Scottsdale um, Courts property on South Broadway, the new um, apartment building. Okay. We have a motion. So moved. Motion by Mr. Calero. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Polakowski. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Rhodes. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Um, personnel, high school English teacher. It's recommended that the board approve the hiring of John Saunders as a high school English teacher at step B2, starting salary of $38,383 per the collective bargaining agreement between the South Woodland School District and the South Woodland Education Association. Need a motion? Motion by Mr. Polakowski. Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Shipley. Roll call. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mr. Bentz? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one absent. Thank you, folks. Addition to the day-to-day -day sub list. It's recommended that the board approve additions to the day-to-day -day substitute list for the 2014-15 school year. Second. Thank you. Uh, second? Second. Second by Mr. Calero. <laughs> Motion by Mrs. Shipley. Roll call, please. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Malakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one absent. Non-athletic supplementals? It's recommended that the board approve the following. Sue Jones, second grade team leader, supplementary salary of $1,591. Jennifer Ticcone, mock trial sponsor, supplemental salary of $677. Paul Britton, high school yearbook sponsor, supplementary salary of $3,077. Need a motion? So moved. Motion by Mrs. Rhodes, second? Second. Second by Mr. Polakowski. Roll call, please. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one absent. Athletic supplementals? It is recommended that the board approve the following. Zach Cavalier, assistant cross-country coach, supplemental salary of $2,342. Kaylee Cummings, head middle school girls soccer coach, supplemental salary of $2,692. Wayne Huffman, assistant middle school girls soccer coach, supplemental salary of $2,359. And Rich Pritz, assistant golf coach, supplemental salary $2,291. Need a motion? <clears throat> motion by Mr. Beistel, second. Second by Mrs. Shipley. Questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Benz? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one absent. Resignation of head middle school girls soccer coach. It's recommended that the board accept the resignation of Chad Hurst as head middle school girls soccer coach effective immediately. Need a motion? Okay. Motion by Mr. Beistel. Second. Second by Mr. Polakowski. Roll call, please. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beisto? Yes. Mr. Vance? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one absent. Grooms Transit? It's recommended that the board approve Robert G. Lobach and John H. Stoffer as additional drivers for Grooms Transit Incorporated for the 2014-15 school year. Their clearances are in file. Need a motion? Motion by Mrs. Shipley. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Polakowski. Roll call, please. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mr. Bentz? Yes. Motion passes 8-0 with one absent. Uh, board reports? CWCTC report? I have no. to report this one. Student. Student report. I did put a couple of things. There's a revised agenda. Yeah. Still wrong Student report.
talk more than reading to reading buddies and random facts and planet. I just work together over the summer to write a new Scotty book, Scotty Piece of Glory. This year's Scotty Learn is all about kindness and what we use to Copy should be available by the middle of September. Uh, picture makeup day is October 21st, uh, Friday, October 3rd. WIU report. Thank you. PSBA liaison report. Uh, the PASA PSBA conference is uh, presenting the uh, third annual student celebration so showcase, and that would be October 22nd at the Hersey Lodge. They are encouraging school districts to participate. And uh, if a district has an outstanding uh, performing arts group or individual that can uh, sing, dance, or play an instrument, uh, please consider attending. Uh, they would perform for 15 minutes, and the deadline is September 19th. So uh, if we have anybody in the district that would be interested in doing that, uh, probably uh, contact Jack or Peggy and, and get that uh, deadline, uh, get that submitted by the deadline. Uh, speaking of the conference, Wednesday's opening session will feature Amanda Ripley. Uh, <coughs> she's going to be speaking on the topic of global quest to save America's schools. Uh, Ripley authored the uh, book, uh, The Smartest Kids in the World. Also on Wednesday, New York Times technology uh, columnist uh, David Pogue will uh, discuss the digital generation and what we will gain and lose as they come into prime time. On Thursday, teacher Tyranny Cahill will speak at the school leadership banquet. Cahill was challenged by her students to run for office. She lost, but the experience first forced her to take responsibility for her life and inspire others. Closing out the conference will be entrepreneur and Harvard professor Nico Miele uh, speaking about uh, the end of big, how the internet makes David the new Goliath. So if anyone is uh, interested in attending, uh, tell Peggy so that uh, she can make the arrangements. And on a final note, I had a privilege, I uh, had the privilege last Saturday, Sunday morning, I'm sorry, Sunday morning, of watching one of our football players, Jake Beistel, uh, being interviewed on the Heinz Ward Show. Uh, Jake was poised, was well-spoken, and I, and I felt that he was a fine representative of the South Warren School District. He made me very proud to be part of the sophomore and family, and uh, as do so many of our students in the district. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Jake, tell him to keep up the good work, and uh, again, very proud, very proud. And that's all I have. Thank you. Superintendent's report? Yes. Um, one item uh, that I'm going to ask you to vote on here, um, typ typically the high school band supplemental position. Uh, includes both the marching and the concert band activities and in the past this has always worked well because the same individual has completed all the duties <clears throat> however last year and this year Sean Harris who has been the high school band director his efforts have primarily been directed toward the marching band while Jamie Gore has continued to work with the concert band um, Mr. Harris and Ms. Mrs. Gore uh, sat down with representatives of administration and, and the association and they um, are willing and actually are recommending that we continue that arrangement and that that band supplemental just be split, split between the two of them based on um, the uh, amount of time and effort that goes into each one. So uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve uh, the fact that, that they would split that, that supplemental. 
no need additional a, cost to the district. Need a motion, please? Second. Motion by Mrs. Rhodes, second by Mr. Polakowski. Questions? Questions from the audience? Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bystool? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mrs. Love? Mr. Betts. Yes, motion passes 8-0 with one absent. Uh, Tuesday, September 9th, uh, the entire administrative team uh, attended a webinar over here in the middle school um, that was put on by the Pennsylvania Association of uh, School Business Officials, and that dealt with emergency planning, emergency drills, and emergency exercises, um, and how they can be conducted, and they went through everything from tabletop operations to full-blown disaster drills, so it was a very informative uh, piece for us. <clears throat> Um, last week, uh, someone came and spoke to you about uh, the temperature at the primary center. Um, doing a little bit of research, uh, we were able to find out that many of the rooms have, do have room size air conditioners in, and it was a matter of three rooms that did not. Um, those have now been installed. So uh, we're hoping that the power holds out, and uh, I think they got high efficiency, high efficiency, low energy usage um, equipment. So, yes. Sir. Three home rooms, yes, three home rooms. So there are other specialty rooms that do not have air. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about enrollment, and Peggy's going to hand out uh, three documents that, that you can have for your, uh, your reference at home. Um, as of June 10, 2014, uh, Southmoreland's enrollment was 1,913 students. As of September 10, 2014, that number had increased by 41 students, and our enrollment as of yesterday was 1,954 students, <clears throat> and um, wondered where those those kids all came from and, and what grades that they were in. So we, we did a little bit of research. Um, kindergarten, uh, three more students over last year's kindergarten enrollment. Class of 2025, or the class of 2026, uh, one student and increase. In the class of 2025, three students. In the class of 2024, we grew by seven students. In the class of 2023, we increased by three students. In the class of 2022, by three students. Class of 2021, by two students. And it goes on and on and on, 2019. Interestingly, um, one of the largest class size cohorts um, would be this year's seniors, the class of 2015, where we gained 12 students. I'm not going to bore you with all those numbers. Um, and we also wondered where those kids came from, so we were able to compile a list that looks like this, which we'll also distribute. Um, we took the, we redacted the names, um, but it talks about where those kids came from. Some came back from cyber charter schools, some came from neighboring school districts, um, some came from districts that were a little bit further away, some came from parochial schools, um, some returned from homeschooling, um, some came from out of state. Uh, so it was a uh, you know, quite the uh, quite the variety in terms of where these new enrollees all came from. In terms of uh, our uh, pro our professional staff, in 2004-2005 we reached a, a recent high of 164 teachers. And that was the year full day kindergarten was instituted. Um, this year we have 21 less teachers on staff than we did back in 04-05 for a total of 143 teachers on staff. <coughs> Last week, you had asked me to contact PDE to request a transcript of a meeting that took place with respect to the Common Core Standards. Um, I uh, sent an email to the um, Acting Secretary of Education requesting that, and I received an email back from her inviting me to telephone her. Um, so I did, and we actually had a kind of a conversation over lunch, long distance lunch meeting, and she explained to me that there was no transcript available because that was not an official hearing. Um, but rather it was a meeting with several citizens who are concerned about the implementation of the Common Core. She also explained to me that there is no intent to reopen Chapter 4, those are the curriculum guidelines, but rather the Governor would continue in his efforts to replace the Common Core with Pennsylvania specific standards. And he's planning to ask the Board of Education along with Dr. Dumares to conduct a public review of Pennsylvania specific language arts and math standards. We will also ask the Acting Secretary to develop a more understandable communication system so that parents can understand the standards as well as their, their children's results of state mandated testing. And um, she told me that uh, on the following day, um, the Governor would have a press release 
um, and I was able to obtain a copy of that, and that's also been distributed for you. <clears throat> and the last thing I have um, is last week um, we received a pretty extensive list of questions from one of our board members. Generally, when a board member asks a question, I, I do my best to answer it and then share that information with the rest of the board. Um, but the list of questions that we received, and if you don't have that, I have extra copies here, um, will require a significant commitment in terms of time and human resources. And before I commit those, those resources, I just wanted some direction from the entire board with respect to your wishes um, on, on that matter. So I'll receive input or take direction from, from the board. Some of these questions aren't necessarily labor intensive. Right. You know, and I mean, some we can are. answer those and get those out of the way sure. relatively quickly. Does somebody want to throw out a motion or something so we have direction for the superintendent then? We have a second. That sounds reasonable. I, I motion by Mr. Calero, second by Mr. Shipley. Do you understand the motion? I do. Roll call, please. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes. Mrs. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Calero? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mr. Betts? Yes. Motion passes 8 0 with one absent. Thank you. That concludes my report, sir. Uh, solicitor's report? I don't have anything to add to what we've <coughs> Citizens' comments? Um, good evening. Jan Kiefer, 628 Homestead Avenue. I'd like to also welcome the uh, student representatives and encourage them to step out of the box this year a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm going to pick up on the conversation that was pretty long last week on the, uh, the dietary issues that the, the school board is getting from the USDA. Um, Mr. Miller sort of used the term centralized control and um, I wanted to find that centralized control as I see it. Um, when you talk about the USDA, we're really talking about a, a a group of people that are composed of industry people, the meat industry, the dairy industry, the, the big ags are your uh, Monsanto's and Cargill's and all those things. Um, and, but who's not in that room of the USDA would be the, the uh, organic people, the, uh, the uh, independent scientists, the nutritionists who are bucking the, uh, the uh, medical system. So we really uh, have centralized control, but it's not political control, it's not democracy, it's, it's industry controlled. And I think that's one of the roots of the problem that we are facing here at South Moreland. If, um, but when, when Dr. Molnar, when you said, you know, we want to be law abiding, I, th I think what I want to hear you say is we're going to be critically thinking and then abide by the law. I'm not asking you to break the law or be a radical, but 
when the tobacco industry said it was good for our kids to smoke tobacco, that was abiding by the law, but yet, critically speaking, we knew better for 30 years. And we've known 30 years now that food has a, a, big, a big impact on, on health, especially children. And it's evidenced by our obesity rates and uh, children on drugs and everything. Um, So the Southmoreland diet is, um, is really making the students sick. We're, we're, and I'm not talking about the new diet that they're on. I'm not talking about the old diet. It's all the same to me. There's very little change. Uh, South, Southmoreland's, uh, the cost of this diet, and when you look at it in subsidies that were given to the meat and dairy industry and to the uh, food manufacturer industries, when you look at the environmental privileges we're giving the poultry and the uh, meat industries, the beef particularly, uh, you know, the cost is still going up. Um, so now we have the cost of health, now we have the cost of the environment. Just as a, a point to drive home, if we um, took the meat out of our diets, that would be the equivalent of all of our transportation uh, environmental impacts, you know, planes, trains, cars. Um, and so the South Morning Diet is truly working against the solution to world hunger. Uh, if we would root out our it, but again, the, the other root of the problem here is no one really knows nutrition that's been to the table yet. With all respect to you, you're a dietitian. My best friend is a dietitian. He's uh, published a lot of books, over 50 books on nutrition. We, you know, we know where the dietitians are. They're coming straight from the information that's come from the USDA, and the USDA is, again, um, a, a flawed source. Um, but just to give you an example of why the, I, I, it's just so important to me to get the idea that they're a flawed source. If we were talking about health care and we brought into the, far, into the meeting room pharmaceutical and, and the insurance industry, um, then that's what we'd get. We'd get Obamacare, where if we were talking about health care and we brought in alternative health people and prevention and a more holistic approach, we'd have a whole different program. And if it was a, an, another analogy would be the war issue. If we have everyone deciding what we're going to do in the world today, and we have generals and the big uh, war industry people, the, the aircraft people and the tank builders, we're going to get one solution. If we have pacifists and uh, diplomats, we're going to get another solution. So again, we're working from a, a foundation that's not good. Um, you know, this is a subject that's really a passion of mine. I did a cafeteria waste study when I was at Penn State University 35 years ago. I worked uh, for the last two years putting out 40 vegan tasty meals uh, that were cheaper than what you're putting out here, much more nutritious. Um, and uh, that was something I've been doing for the last couple years, not every day, of course. Um, I have a food handler's license. I've, um, I produce food for this organization I'm working with. And I work at the Scottsdale Food Bank, and I've seen their educational program, how abysmal it is, and where they're um, and where you're all coming from with your dietitian and your USDA. So just in summary then, um, nothing, in you ha nothing you serve, I mean nothing in your cafeteria, a, a truly health and informed uh, person would eat for you know, various reasons. Um, and uh, let's see if I have anything else. I think I'm to the end of my list. Uh, so finally, just to, in, in a lighthearted way, you know, if you go into the community and you ask people about religion, education, and nutrition, you're going to find everyone's an expert. I don't pretend that I'm going to persuade anyone to go home and, and change their dietary habits. Um, but if we can't be scientific about it, um, then what's the whole point of education? Thank you. Thank you. Any board members have anything? <clears throat> Motion to adjourn? First by Mrs. Shipley, second. Second by Mr. Calero. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. Thank you.